All right, so welcome everyone to our first personal development chat of the year. I used to do these, um, I don't know, do any of you guys remember, were any of you here when I did them like several years ago? We would do a, a chat about personal development. Becky, do you kind of remember? <laughs> anyway, I was like, we need to do this again because I feel like that is something that is like so important, but I think it's the thing that a lot of people put on the back burner. Like, oh, I don't need personal development. I don't have time for it. I'm in survival mode. But it's like the thing that literally can totally change your business and your life. And it just, I think it gets neglected. So I'm like, I, I want to put more focus on this. And I just want to like chat and get inspired and um, learn from you guys and what you're reading, reading. And so I wanted to just have a chat about what you have been reading, listening to regarding personal development. Um, and, and then, it, you know, if you're just here to, to get some ideas on what to read or listen to, that's fine too. Um, but the more we share, the more we learn from each other. Right. So, um, I will go first and then I would love for each of you if you can, even if it's just a quote, even if you just have like an inspiring quote to just like take a minute on the mic and share one thing maybe you've learned in the last month regarding personal or even business development. Um, so I will share one of the books. I'll just kind of show you a couple of books that I, this is the last book I read called Identity Shift, um, Upgrade How You Operate to Elevate Your Life. I, I liked pieces of it. I don't know that I was like mind blown, if I'm honest. Um, I'll share the pieces that I liked of it. Cause I, how I read books is I listen to them on, so I, I buy the Kindle book on the Kindle app and I just have it on my phone here. So, um, let's see. So like, I have a whole library of all these books and then I buy it and, um, so that particular book, I, um, I buy it, but I also buy the audio that goes with it. So I can literally like read it. Like if my husband is asleep in bed and I'm still awake, which is usually the case, he falls asleep in like one second. Um, I will read, but if I'm like out and about and I want to listen to it, I can listen to it right here by pressing play and it will, put, and it will read it to me where I stopped, you know, where I was like reading. So it'll save my place and read it to me. So I love, I kind of love that I get the best of both words and it's on my phone. So it's like, I always have a book in my pocket, you know? Um, anyways, some of my favorites, I'm just going to pull up like some of the things that I, uh, my favorite notes from it. Um, he said one of the things that, he said some of the things that like help us um, one of the things that help us to become better in life is to figure out what our blind spots are. Like to ask people, ask your loved ones, ask your besties, what are my blind spots? Like, what are some things that I know I, that I need to work on, but I haven't, I don't even know I need to work on. Right. I thought that was fascinating. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's also terrifying to like, ask someone like, okay, what do I need to work on? Um, but that was one of the things, that was one of the biggest things I got out of his book was like, figure out your blind spots. Um, and, and then let's see, I'm looking at some of the other quotes that he had. Yeah, it says, in order to make any forward progress, you need to first stop. You for, need to first see what's in your blind spots, what's really stopping you. He also called our ego everyone's greatest obstacle. Obstacle that was like his acronym for ego, um, which I do think our ego is like meant to protect us, but sometimes it protects us so much that it gets in the way of like us, you know, getting out of our comfort zone. Um, he talked a lot about action. He said to upgrade your operating system through action. And that basically the only way to like get past your fears and get better at something was to take, he called it unconfident action. And I loved that because I think a lot of us are like waiting for confidence before we do the thing. But I think that you got to do the thing and then the confidence comes. And so um, I thought that was really great. Um, what else? Let me just look at a couple more notes here.
Um, <laughs> actions end suffering. I loved that part because I think that we suffer in our heads. We're constantly like, I, I should do it. I need to do it, blah, 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 blah. But for me, and I 100% agree with that, when I take action, you know, even like I was telling Becky, she was the first person to hop on. I was like, I'm feeling disconnected from the team. And so I was like, I just need to do something, which meant let's do a Zoom, you know, and maybe that's only a handful of people out of thousands, right? But now I'm seeing your faces and I'm having a conversation and it's making me feel like more connected. So instead of just letting it like rumble around in your brain, when we take action, we end that suffering. So I really loved that. Um, let's see what else. <laughs> um, he talked about me. He said that the things that look, he said, they want the hard things by doing what is easy. Life doesn't work that way. When you set out to do things the easy way in life, success will always feel hard, mostly because the level of hard work, hang on, hang on. Um, he Basically, he talked about how, making things easy. And he said, you make things easy by doing them repeatedly repeatedly so it's like yes the beginning is hard like for example the beginning of do, of this compensation plan feels hard it feels like unknown it's scary it's um but the more we like look at the comp plan the more we try to teach people about the comp plan the more we um just try to maybe watch videos about the comp plan the more the easier it gets and so it's like with doing like facebook lives like remember how scary you know at the beginning facebook lives are terrifying and then once you um do them more they get easier until it's like that ain't no that ain't a thing anymore like that's you're not scared anymore so he was like you do the scary the hard things until they become easy and i just like love that analogy because we're like, oh, that's too hard. I don't want to do it. But it's like, if we have in our head, like this is going to get easier and pretty soon it's going to become a habit. And once it's a habit, then it's really easy because it's like automated. We don't even have to think about it. Um, so he said, like, this is the exact reason why the successful people you look up to make their success look easy. It is, e it is easy to them. The work is not different. It's the exact same work. So I thought that was a really cool concept. Um, so there was that. And then the book I just got is Jordan Lee Dooley's book, Embrace Your Almost. That's the new book that I'm going to read. I haven't even started it yet. Um, so yeah, those are my, those are my latest reads and current reads. Um, does anyone want to share theirs? Or it can be a podcast you listen to, whatever. I can share mine. <clears throat> okay. Um, it's kind of, I've been slowly reading. <laughs> You'll recognize this one, Kelly. I'm still reading uh, The Built to Belong. But now That's a good one. Um, I'm almost done, like 40 pages. I'm going to finish this today. That's my goal. <laughs> um, but I, I really like um, this book. Um, she just highlights, like, I guess, for a community, um, just through, like, social media and, like, just with your team and, like, there's just a lot of really good points in here. Um, I don't have it written down in front of me, but those are just like a few that I <laughs> um, remember off the top of my head. But yeah, they it's a really, really good book. So I definitely recommend it. <laughs> yeah, that was a really good one. And it, and it reminded me like that we, how much we need people. I think it's easy to forget that when we're like, we work from home, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, many of us, don't have other jobs and if you're a mom like you it's sometimes even hard to just like get out of the house and stuff but when I was reading that um, I was actually listening to it on audio while I was driving to a retreat that I was hosting for um, the top leaders that earned it in Palms and I hosted it in Palm Springs so I'm driving to Palm Springs and I'm listening to it and I was like Oh my gosh, like I really do. I just need people. We need people, even if it's like this, these Zoom calls. Like we need community, especially women. Like we talk. It, that's how we process things. Like we talk them out. And so I think it's just that book re reminded me after like a pandemic of being at home and you kind of like 
it all turned us into introverts, right? Like awkward introverts, right? But it was like, no, we like need people and we need to either you know, look for opportunities to find community or create, create our own community. So, yeah. Did you have anything else you wanted to share, Becca? No, no, I think that was it. Um, yeah, my plan is to read the uh, book you were going to read next to with Jordan. Um, mine should hope to be here on Thursday. So, <laughs> Awesome. Love it. Thanks for sharing, Becca. Yeah, no problem. Anyone else want to share? Well, like you said in the beginning, Kelly, sometimes we put personal development on the back burner. Yeah. And that's been my life for the past few months is just not doing it. So I kind of hopped in just to get ideas, ideas for different books, audiobooks. I don't really have time to sit down and read. So um, podcasts and audiobooks are are my jam. Totally. Um, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at. It's, it's just been non-existent and I've been in survival mode. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I share, I'm, but I'm here for the I'm idea. so glad you shared that, Jess. Like you're here, you're, you know, you know that it's important and you're ready to take it to the next level, which honestly, like, I mean, I started, I, okay. My very first personal development book I got when I was in seventh grade in junior high, which was, you know, junior high is literally the worst. Like <laughs> it's the worst. I don't know anyone but like junior high. Um, and my teacher gave it to me and it was called go for it. I wish I had, I think I have, I don't know if I have it right here, but it is the cheesiest like eighties book. Um, <laughs> but when, I, but it was so empowering. I just remember reading it and being like, I can do anything. Like I can take over the world, you know? And, um, and I just remembered that. And then there was another one I read called inside outside beauty book. And that was also like, just made me feel better in like a, that time when I'm trying to discover, figure out who I was. And then I kind of, you know, took a break from those types of books. And then when I joined the world of network marketing, it was huge. Like they were like, no, personal de development needs to be part of your everyday routine, 10 minutes a day. And so I was like, all right, I'm doing this. And I truly believe like, I mean, it has completely changed my life in literally every aspect of my life. I mean, I've read, I've even read books about like, out, you know, styling your clothes or like parenting or business, network marketing, um, like every faith, like every aspect of my life. And there's so many things that I have changed about my life because of a particular book. And when I say book, I mean, audio books, because I do not actually read actual physical books. Um, so so it's just, it really, truly, it's going to change your life if you can try to make it a habit, like make it easy by um, making it part of your day every day. And like, so in order to make it a habit, you've got to like habit stack, like make it piggyback it off something you already do. So if you're, you know, have a routine of putting on your makeup every morning, listen to personal development, you can literally listen to it in the shower with um there's like shower speakers you can listen to you can listen while you're driving we all drive like you know carpools whatever um taking kids to school those are great just squeezing it in here and there even if it's just like five minutes a day i'm telling you it's it'll it's a game changer because it helps you get out of your own head out of your own way um and that's usually the thing that is is getting in our way. In fact, I'm going to read you a quote from another book called Market Your Genius. Um, she said, the only box you've ev you're have ever in is the one you put around yourself. Boom. I think we all do that. We put little boxes around ourselves, and personal development helps you um, break, break down that box. So there's my rant about personal development. <laughs> Uh, okay, Brooke or Becky, would you like to share? Or Jess, were you going to say something else? No, you're good. Okay. Brooke or Becky, I'm putting you on the spot. Um, I have been slacking as far as business personal development, but mm -hmm. I have been reading um, like just personal development. It just, it's actually a faith-based book. Uh -huh. Life 
is what I've been doing. And I was like, it was taking me a while to do it, but I just started setting a timer and doing 15 minutes a day instead of 10. But I think what you're saying, like I did so well when I used to um, listen to podcasts and stuff on the way to pick up Cora, cause it's like a 25 minute drive. Yeah. But um, I fell off the wagon and haven't even thought about it. So I'm glad I jumped on here and I need to find another podcast to start listening to. So if anyone has any, anything that they have suggestions on, on podcasts, that would be awesome. I mean, I could do another book in the car. I didn't even think about that. I could do that. Do they have an audio version of the one that you're starting yes. now? There's almost an audio version for literally almost every book. There was one that, the one that I wanted to jump in and do, there wasn't one. Maybe it was the girl that was on The Bachelorette or something like that. Maybe oh, that one. Really? There wasn't? That's weird. I well, maybe I'm wrong, but one of them that I was going to jump in and do, and I was like, dang it, there's not one on that, but yet, so there is one on that one, right? On, on the one. Embrace Your Almost? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Right? I, I think there is. I have not actually double-checked, but I'm almost sure there is. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll double-check while we're talking. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just think, like, yeah, I... I don't know why I don't get into podcasts as much. I think I just want to like really like dive in on a topic, I think. And also I just feel really proud of myself for like reading a whole book, you know, <laughs> listening to a whole book. So yeah. Um, so I think this will be good. I love the subtitle. I need to read you the subtitle. It says find clarity and contentment in the in-betweens, not quites and unknowns, which is kind of where we're at with the new comp plants. Like, it's I, it, for me, it feels like, ah, is this going to work out? Is this, <laughs> you know, it's scary because it's, it's the unknown. Um, and so, so I think that'll be a really great read. And honestly, Brooke, I think that it's more important to read personal development than business development, but I mentioned business development because I'd rather you read one of those than none of those, you know? Um, so yeah. But I will tell you some of my favorite personal development books, if you guys want. <laughs> um, one is uh, You Are a Badass. I freaking love that book. That book was a game changer for me. It does have some F words in there, just a warning. Um, and then um, The Go-Giver was really helpful for me. That one was huge. Go-Giver. So good. So good. Um, essentialism. I've read that one three times and, and you are a badass. I think I've read like twice go giver. I might've read, I've read like, there's so many versions of the go giver. Um, I think I've read like several of the versions. It'll be like the go giver sales or the go giver, blah, blah, blah. I've read like a few of the versions and I love them all, but read the original go giver. Um, and then a really good one for just relationships is how to win friends and influence people. Um, so those are like, oh, and then Slight Edge, that one's not on audio. So you actually have to read the book, but that one also was really, really changed my perspective on like taking baby steps. Um, so those are like some of my top five probably. Uh, okay, Becky. Uh, you need to make a list and post it somewhere for us. <laughs> um, so I slack big time on personal development, but uh, mine's not oh, mine's not really a personal development book. This is a workbook. It's this. Oops. It is um, seven weeks. Okay. Yeah, it's like a workbook that I'm doing with my therapist. <laughs> Love it. Um. Yeah, I've been in like survival mode for three years. So I'm getting out of that now. And this is like, um, I haven't really read a lot of it, but it's kind of like a mindfulness book. Mm -hmm. um, it's called like the act is like acceptance and commitment therapy, basically. So you just, um, I don't really know a lot about it, but it's got mindfulness stuff in there and it seems good. It's like being in the present moment, basically. And it's also a workbook. Like it gives you like seven weeks of things to do. 
so that instead of like changing your behavior, uh-huh. you just accept the things and, you know, learn how to live with that, I guess, like accepting it instead of trying to change everything you're doing. True. I seriously think accepting things is so freaking hard. <laughs> right. Well, and it's like, and I think we get this like idea of like, oh, I've got to change this and I've got to, I've got to change the way I think and I change the way I do things. And if I change this, I'll be like a better mom. Or if I change, you know, like, but like, those are like kind of the core things about you sometimes, you know, that you, know. you just can't change. So, true. so, and if you learn to like accept it and you're like, maybe you're having emotions about something or you're angry about something, you go, okay that's anger. And we're going to just label that as anger. And, and that's what it is and move on. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. So, and I think you got it. And accepting yourself, like, yeah. Accepting, like your accepting that I have emotions about this and emotions are okay because I grew up in a house where you were angry or you were sad and, and that was, or happy. That was it. There was sad or happy. And that's basically it. And you weren't allowed to have any other emotions. Yeah. So I think this is like helping with like, it's okay to have emotions and accept them and figure out what they are. And, and it's okay. You yeah. Know? You don't have to change that part about you. Totally. So, so I, I guess this is a personal development book. <laughs> 100%. If it's a workbook, my heavens, that's like the ultimate personal development book. Yeah. So I just heard a quote that's just reminded me of a quote. My friend told me, she was like, Feelings are not problems. They're just feelings because yeah. I'm a fixer. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, oh, I'm just going to like, oh my gosh, like I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling, you know, depressed, whatever. And it's like, I got to fix it. I got to fix it. I can't, yep. you know, yeah. I think we're all kind of trained to, to feel like feelings are, are yeah. Problems or not. Okay. You know, it's like, and this is the kind of like, it's okay to have them just label them, say what that is and just move on, you know? Right. Yeah. And I think the more we just like accept them and feel them, like, I truly believe we have to like feel our feelings and let them flow through our body. Mm-hmm. Otherwise they get stuck yep. um, and we have to like express it, whether it's um, like, we have to almost like feel the feelings and then like express them out of our body. So that means like you either vocalize them, you exercise them out, like sweat it out, you um, journal it out, like write it out of your body. But like, I really feel like we have to express them out or they get stuck or like oh, yeah. therapy, you know, whatever oh, works best for you, all of the above. Oh yeah. I learned all kinds of things in therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I feel like everyone needs therapy cry every week I'm like gosh dang it I was gonna try to make it through <laughs> but I love it thanks for sharing Becky um Kate oh shoot we are out of time oh my gosh that went by fast um and I'm sorry I do have to cut it short I have a call with some uh with a leader so I've gotta go but I really loved this short and sweet conversation and I mean like I already have learned a little bit from you guys and so, so I just want to in, empower you all to, and encourage you all to like, make it a more of a part of your life. And same with me too. Like I get out of the habit easily. It's very easy to get out of the habit, but, uh, which is why you want that. You don't want that gap to get bigger and bigger. Make that gap small between the days that you read your personal development. Like try to make it either make it like, I'm going to read it at this exact time every day. Or just like anytime I get in the car, I always say, make your car a college. Like when you get in the car, instead of li- re- listening to music, make your car a college and listen to personal development. So, all right. Thanks you guys so much for joining. I appreciate seeing your faces and um, we'll see you next time. Bye.